Hello everybody! We want to thank you so much for all of your love and concern and friendship and support. Um, I read all of the comments underneath the video I did yesterday and thank you very much. Some of you are so funny. Cracks me up. Um, I found my old disc of my old video editing program and put it on my laptop. So yay, I have a video editing program now. And we just happened to be watching a video on YouTube. Now we like the archaeology videos and like we've mentioned before, and I may not agree with everything they say, but you know, a lot of them have some good points. So we were watching one and it's like, wait, uh, huh? what did he just say? Back it up. And we watched it again. It's like, oh my God. Now, before I get into all of that, um, let me play you the clip that caught my attention. There is also this artistic rendering of the Sphinx and its internal structure. It is taken from Charles Russell's Photo Drama of Creation, which was released in 1914, and he seems to have gotten his information from an image titled Remarkable Discoveries Within the Sphinx, The Temple Within Its Hollow Head, by Professor George A. Reisner. It is a diagrammatic view of hidden chambers and a stairway inside the Sphinx. George was an American archaeologist of Egypt, and today I was lucky enough to find this absolutely astounding article from the Australian newspaper Northern Territory Times and Gazette from Thursday, March the 5th, 1914, which confirms Reisner's discoveries and confirms our suspicions. Very interesting, isn't it? Now, this is the kind of archaeology you're not going to see on mainstream, you know, archaeology. You're not going to see these on PBS or, you know, A&E or some of these others. Um, you might see it on the National Geographic channel itself, but usually not. But this is the kind of videos I like. And um, I may not agree with everything they say, but they do make some good points. Now, what was interesting about this is like, Okay, this is the photo drama of creation. I have that, you know, in my archives. So I went and got the clip, and it was so interesting of what C.T. Russell believed about ancient Egypt. You know, and then Mike and I are like, well, where did he get this? You know, this wasn't something that he came up with. Where did he get this? Now, I'm going to put the link down below to the full video from that clip. And, you know, there was some articles mentioned. And the guy doing this video, you know, he does read the article. And I do know Herodotus uh, wrote about this back in like the 3rd to 4th century. 4th century, I believe. About this whole city underneath the Giza Plateau. You know, and that's always fascinated me. And before I started having computer problems, I actually started working on my book. And it was going to be a piece of fiction about an archaeologist. And she's down in these, you know, labyrinths. But when I seen this, it was like, wow, you know, what the heck did Russell know and what did he believe? So here I'm going to play a clip from Photodrama of Creation. So you can see what he said. Now this is the 1914 actual Photodrama of Creation that has been digitally remastered by someone. Demigods of Greece and Egypt, long have the learned wondered what foundation Grecian mythology might have had. Now, taking heed to the sure word of God, we perceive that the angels who materialized before the flood were the gods of mythology, while their offspring, the giants, were the demigods. The suggestion may well start a flood of reflection in thinking minds. Egyptologists have been astonished by their findings in the tombs of the pharaohs. In some of these, historic tablets have been found, tracing the ancestry of the pharaohs apparently back to creation the first pharaoh, Adam. But these tablets show so many more generations than the Bible records that Egyptologists lose all faith in the Genesis account. They become higher critics, discount the Bible records, and pin their faith to the Egyptian tablets. They confess, however, that these tablets vary and more or less contradict each other. Conceitedly, the most accurate 
is the Abidus tablet, found in the sepulchre of Sitai I, probably the pharaoh who made Joseph his prime minister and who is supposed to have died about 120 years before Moses was born. The chief fault found with this tablet is that it is not so lengthy as some of the others. Nevertheless, Pharaoh Sitai I preserved this tablet for us with great care. He sank a shaft 60 feet deep through solid rock. At that level, his masons cut out the stone staircase on which the Abidus tablet is portrayed. An exact copy of it is to be found in the British Museum. At considerable expense and with difficulty, we have secured the photograph of it, which we here present. Our object is to show that this best of Egyptian records fully corroborates the Genesis account. This list of pharaohs is shorter than the others because it omits the names of gods and demigods. It is the complete Egyptian record of the purely human line of rulers back to Adam. Furthermore, these omissions occurred at the appropriate place, at the time of the deluge. Adam, Mina, was Pharaoh first. The Abidus tablet fully agrees with Genesis and is often corroborated by the Greek and Egyptian historians Herodotus and Manetho. It shows Adam as the first Pharaoh and Noah the twentieth, while the intermediate eighteen correspond with Genesis with remarkable accuracy. Mina's wife was Shesh, Hebrew, Isha, woman. Her first son was Pharaoh second, Greek, Peter Kent, guilty one, Hebrew, Carnegie, Latin, Athos, English, Cain. The tablet for Abel represents him as the non-resistant one. The Abidus tablet shows the same order as Moses, giving first the line of Cain down to Jabal, who was Satan. At that time, evidently, the gods and demigods began to fill the earth with violence. Cetai's list omits the names of these. All demigods were destroyed in the deluge. Noah is next in order with a regal title. I found this very interesting. You know, I don't know if it's true or not. And I do know that, you know, these labyrinths and tunnels and caverns do exist, you know, on this Giza Plateau. And I find it interesting, you know, I don't know if it's true or not, but where did Russell get this? You know, did he get it just from this article? Um, I firmly believe that mankind has lost a lot of our history. And so many of these videos say that, you know, we're a species that has amnesia because there's evidence of these ancient civilizations and we know nothing about them. You know, Gobekli Tepe, we know absolutely nothing about that. So I hope you guys find this interesting. Um, I thought it was incredible, you know, the connection that this, you know, ancient architect made with you know C.T. Russell because you usually you don't hear them mention that so and allegedly there's a lot of myth and legends that there is a huge archive um, underneath you know in the, in the Giza Plateau you know there's a huge library they said that makes the Library of Alexandria you know look very small in comparison because this is supposedly where all of the history is and there's even been some speculation that it's in one of the caverns underneath the sphinx but unfortunately the egyptian you know ministry of um, archaeology won't let the archaeologists go in there in these caverns and these labyrinths you know everything is locked up why you know, do they know something about man's history that's going to disagree, you know, with what the mainstream thought is? I don't know. I don't know. But um, I do find this all very fascinating. And like I said, I love watching these. And I just thought you all might be interested just to see the connection. You know, because we've talked before about Russell and his belief in the pyramids and how he used the pyramids to measure, you know, to come up with the 1914 thing. But, you know, this kind of like gives it a little bit more background of what he actually believed. You know, obviously Russell believed that Adam was the first pharaoh, and we already know he had this, fa this fascination with Egypt, you know. Nothing wrong with that. 
I do myself, you know, I always have. Even as a witness, I loved archaeology, especially Egypt, you know, but witnesses frowned on that because that was a pagan civilization. But, like we've said before, all roads seem to lead back to Egypt and Samaria and Babylon and all of these ancient civilizations. So, hope you guys enjoyed that and we will see you later. Bye.